climate change science, policy and carbon management, the term carbon dioxide equivalent, or CO2E, is used by experts and policymakers a lot. So what does it mean? Before we answer that, let's consider an analogy. Imagine you get home from a round the world holiday and at the bottom of your bag you find one US dollar, 1,000 Indian rupees and 100 euros. What is the combined value of this money? Obviously, you can't add the three different currencies together. So first you convert all three values into a common denomination, let's say US dollars, using exchange rates. Then they can be summed together to give a single value. This same idea applies to greenhouse gases. There are many gases that have a global warming impact, including carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, sulfur hexafluoride, perfluorocarbons, and hydrofluorocarbons. These are emitted by both natural and anthropogenic sources. Anthropogenic sources include fossil fuel combustion, for example, in cars, and agriculture, landfills, and air conditioners, among others. Each greenhouse gas traps heat in the atmosphere at different rates, and they also have different atmospheric lifetimes. For example, methane has a lifetime of around 12 years, while nitrous oxide stays in the atmosphere for 10 times longer at 121 years. This leaves us with the classic problem of comparing apples to oranges. In order to make meaningful comparisons between different gases and calculate their combined global warming effect, we need to come up with a common unit of measurement. The same way we converted all our currencies into US dollars, we convert all of our greenhouse gas emissions into one common unit, tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent, which is commonly expressed as tonnes of CO2e. Essentially, scientists use carbon dioxide as a benchmark for measuring the heat trapping ability of other greenhouse gases. To convert the other greenhouse gases into carbon dioxide equivalents, we multiply the mass of emissions by the appropriate global warming potential, or GWP. Global warming potential represents the relative warming effect of a unit mass of the gas when compared with the same mass of carbon dioxide over a specific time period. This is commonly 20 or 100 years. Specifying the time period is important to address the different atmospheric lifetimes of the different greenhouse gases. Global warming potentials are published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and recognised by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Here, you can see the global warming potentials of several gases for a 100-year time period. Methane, for example, has a global warming potential of 28 that means one tonne of methane is equivalent to 28 tonnes of carbon dioxide. So, if 1,000 tonnes of methane are generated annually at a landfill site, this is equal to 28,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent, or CO2e. We've established that not all greenhouse gases are created equal. But, by using tonnes of CO2e, we have a common unit that we can use. This allows us to measure and compare different greenhouse gases and understand their combined impact on climate change.